So, we all agree this is a go? Okay, Kiel, we good to go. Okay, 316. We're good to go. Okay, go. Everyone, stand by. One minute until showtime. Sound and lighting, stand by. Multimedia, stand by. Sunday service, stand by. Offstage creative, stand by. Offstage creative, stand by.
Amen. Let me just pray one more time. Father in heaven, we come to you, God. At 316, right here, right now, God. We just want to sing this song for you. This is, this is the song. It's called the Lord's Prayer. In Indonesia, we say it, Baba Kami. And it, it, is, it is written at the Bible. It said, It's Father in heaven, holy is your name. Hallowed be your name. Let your kingdom come and yet let your will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. God, we believe that. This is very powerful song this is a very powerful prayer that we're about to sing right here right now at 316 it is an honor for us God for us to be able to sing this this is the prayer that God himself taught us it is written in the Bible it is said our Father in heaven holy hallowed be your name God yes. so at this moment God we just want to lift your name high God we invite your kingdom and let your will be done. Let your kingdom come, Jesus. So, Father, please, through this song, we invite you, God.
for this wonderful morning, Lord. Yes, God. And we gather here by today at this 360 Youth Ministry, Lord. We know not by a coincidence that we gather here because you love us all, Lord. Yes. Father, teach us with your words today that will encourage us and empower us for our daily lives, Lord. Yes. Knowing that you love us so much, no matter what happened within our past, you still love us and you will always still do, Lord. Amen. Amen. Father, speak over me. Whatever that you want to send your message to your children today, so it will be sent clearly loud and clear Lord so they'll not just listen but they will do the will of God yes, in Jesus Christ mighty name we're ready to receive your words let we all say amen amen amen, amen. amen. let's give a round of applause to all this worshiper and to the Lord thank you so much guys it was an awesome worship. Thank you for all the worshiper today. And guys, I want to give an encouragement. I want to speak up to someone today. The one that just now was on the front, that lady with the green jacket. Who are you? What's your name? Eliana. Eliana, I want to speak over you. That the Spirit of the Lord saying, you know, you will change the world. You will change the world. And whatever the season that you're going through right now, believe maybe this is just a stepping stone that God wants you to excel. So do not be afraid of what's going on within in your life because the best is yet to come for you. All right, Eliana, God loves you. All right, guys, welcome once again to 360 Youth Ministry. And let me introduce myself. You know, I've been speaking in, in 360 online for a few times, right? But it is so good to be here for the very first time and on site. You know, let me introduce my name is Pastor Brian Nelson. And I'm a pastor from Empower, one of the church called Empower Indonesia. And at the very first, I want to thank you to Pastor Yanto Singoputra and Pastor Juan as well, and all the GBIPRJ families and members, and to all of you guys. It is such an honor to be here to, to speak the word of guys for all of you guys. So, are you ready? Are you ready? Okay, guys, welcome to December because. It's already the second week of December, right? And time flies really fast. It's almost Christmas, guys. Who's excited for Christmas? Because I am. And today, I will speak over a word of God, a short message of my team that called, Come Home. I want you to speak out loud with me, Come Home. Come Home. And... Maybe when you enter some of, um, every time you come to the church as, as today, some of the usher, when they welcome you saying, welcome home, right? But what does home really means to you? Because about one month ago, I want to tell some story. I have an opportunity to go to travel for holidays to go to South Korea, to Seoul. And at first, of course, I was so excited I, because I know it will be an amazing trip because the season at, at the moment in there was an autumn season. And it is beautiful because uh, the weather was nice. It was cold, but it was not too freezing. But, and the leaves was falling down on the trees, you know, all the, all the yellow leaves. It was so beautiful. 
And when I was walk out on the street, there's so many, a lot of pretty cafes. A lot of pretty cafes. And I felt like, you know, I feel like I'm in Drakor. You know what Drakor is? Like drama Korean, you know? I feel like the actors in drama Korean, I felt like, oh, this is so good. It's so different from our hometown that we love so much, Jakarta. It is hot, yep, and it's full of traffic. And as well, the air was so polluted. It's 100 degrees different from Korea. But you know what happened after I stayed there too long, after the second week of my stay in Korea? I get super duper bored. I get super duper bored, guys. I miss my hometown. Even though maybe the food was amazing, the place looks like a paradise, but I miss my hometown, Jakarta. I miss my room. I miss my bed. I miss my bakmi that I always go every morning, you know, the bakmi ayam that I never miss before I go to work. I miss them a lot. And most of all, I miss going to church. I miss my family. And the point is, I miss my home and I want to come back home. I want to come back home. Guys, let me not talk further about me or my trip. Let us talk about you, about us. All right? Have you ever felt the way that I did when I was in Korea? When I was about to leave, you know, it feels so excited to leave home. And you, you think you will find happiness throughout the world, they're provided by the world. But the very end of the day, you said, this is not what I'm looking for. And I want to come back home because I miss my home, guys. And maybe right now, I'm not speaking about home as physically. Maybe a place that you're trying to find somewhere as your getaway. And maybe you're trying to find a happiness outside through the world that provided by the world. Maybe a pleasure that comes from temporary. Maybe when I'm talking about, maybe, maybe it's alcohol, you know? Going for a party sometime to, you know, with your friends to get some getaway. Maybe take out all the stress, yeah? Maybe you go, maybe you go from, to drugs, maybe. Maybe you go for some, some sex, or, or you go some, doing some sinful stuff with your friends. You know, maybe that you, you get away. Maybe that's the happiness. But let me tell you something, guys. That happiness just lasts for temporary. The permanent happiness, the eternal of happiness, that what we call home is actually with Jesus Christ himself. With Jesus Christ himself. That's our real home, guys. That's our real home. So once more, I want to talk about my team today. Let us learn together about a message called coming home. Let us open our Bible or our electronic Bible, our e-Bible. Yes, there's one parable, that's one verse, talks about a parable of a lost son that teaches me somehow about a son who's trying to find a temporary happiness from the outside, but the very end, he knows that not what they, he's looking for, and he come back home. He come back home to his family, to his father. Let us open in Luke 15, verse 11 until 20. Luke 15, verse 11 until 20. Let us read it out loud together. Yes? Let us read it out loud together. Jesus continued, There was a man who had two sons. 
the young one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together. Ali had set off a distant country and there squandered his wealth in a wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out of citizen of that country who sent him to his field to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pots that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And he, I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called you son. Make me like one of your higher servant. Amen? Guys, let me revise, let me breathe about this message. There is a two son of a father. One of the younger sons said to his father, Father, give me all your inheritance of your wealth. Give me your inheritance of your wealth. And what happened? The father gave it to him. Everything that he had. The part for his younger son. And divided by the younger son and the biggest son. But what happened of the younger son? He sold every of his inheritance of his wealth. And he went to a country that far, far away. To do what? He spent it all on partying. Getting drunk. On prostitutes. Until what happened? There is no leftover of his money. And not just yet, there is a severe famine that happens to that country. And he became so poor. And he became so hungry. To the point, he asked some of one of a citizen for a job. And he said, please give me a job. Give me anything. And that citizen said, okay, I'll give you a job. Take care of my pigs on the field. And what happened when he was in the field of the pigs? He was so starving to death. He, even when he looked up of the, the pig foods, he wanted to eat them. He wanted to eat them. But even the owner doesn't want to give that food to him. It's not because it was disgusting. It's not because the food was, you know, disgusting. So I don't want to give it to you. It's because the pigs is more precious than that man. The pigs was precious than that man. So that is why the owner doesn't want to give it to him. And until he remembered and he said, far away in my own country, in my own home, my father has so many wealth. He was so wealthy. He has so many servants. And I am here starving to death. So now I better go back home. I better go back home. And let me apologize on my knees. And hopefully he didn't punish me. If he said he didn't want to receive me, I would say, at least make me your hired servant. Amen? Guys, I want you guys to note this from this story. Remember who you really are. Remember who you really are in God's eyes. That you are the children of God. You are the children of kings of kings who have all that wealth in his kingdoms. Who have all, everything, all the joy, the happiness, all that peace. That is the eternal. So know yourself. 
know your word. And even though maybe some of the people, he have their inability or he cannot see your value. But it doesn't mean your value is less in God's eyes. You are too worthy. You're too valuable in His eyes. Even though maybe you have a past, you have sinful past. You see, maybe you see yourself dirty and disgusted of yourself and you are shameful of coming back home. Remember that son and he remember who he really is. Back home, I have a father who's so wealthy, who have so many servants. And as well, we have to think the same. We have to remember who we really are. Come back to Jesus. Come back to Jesus, guys. Guys, I have this printed money. And it was printed by the government, of course, of the Bank of Indonesia. And it have its value, right? Of 50,000 rupiah. And if I want to get something out of it, it values 50,000 rupiah. And imagine, guys, if I crush this, I try to ruin this money, and maybe I make it more worse. Maybe I try to make it dirty a little bit. Let me step on it. You know, let me try to step on it, make it disgusted a little bit. But let me ask you guys, isn't this seems a little bit dirty and ruined? But does it mean the value decrease? Does the value decrease? Does the value become, this is a 50,000, does the value become a 5,000 after I, I crushed it, I make it dirty? And the same way as you do, guys. Your value is still the same. He sees you the same. He loves you the same. So do not be afraid to come back home to Jesus because he's waiting at the door of your heart for you to open up back to him it's the same way as the father who's waiting at the door for his long lost son to come back home that's the same as that money. Maybe it seems dirty. It's disgusting. But it still has its own value and precious. God sees you the same. God sees you the same. You are valuable. And you are worthy in His eyes. Let me give one of applause to Jesus. Let us continue the verse, which in chapter 15, verse 20 until 24. Let me read it out loud to all of you guys. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arm around him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servant, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandal on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let have feast and celebrate. For his son of mine was dead and is alive again. 
and it was lost, and it was found. So they begin to celebrate. Amen? So what happened, guys? After when he thought he'd come back home, maybe the father, the dad, will punish him. Will be, be mad at him because he spent all his wealth. But no. The father, when he looked from far away, he said, he long lost son, I'll come back home. The first thing the dad did was running and chasing into him. And he welcomed him back home. And he gave him a warm hug, a warm, warm kiss. And he celebrated by cutting one of uh, the best sheep and celebrate with the parties. Because he thought his son was dead. But now he is still alive. The one who was lost and now was found. Guys, I want you to note this. I want to you for note this. You can write it down maybe in your gadget. But write it down. Guys, the magic about home, it always feels good when you leave, right? But it always feels even much better when you come back home. Yes, the magic about home, it always feels when you want to leave home. You were excited. You seems like very happy. Like I got what I have done in Korea. You know, at first I want to travel. I was so excited. But the very end I said like, you know, I feel even much better when I came back home. Amen? Guys, when I came back from Korea, I have a, um, a sleepover with my parents. And the one that story that I want to give it to you um, about it's always feels better to come back home. You know, I used to study in, in Australia, in Melbourne, Australia. Of course, when I was there, I lived independently. I have my own schedule. I have my own routine. I have own my my about my life and anything just about how I can manage about my own life. But the very end after the uni times, I have to come back for good to Jakarta. And of course, I came back living by my parents. And there was the changes that frustrated me because you know why? All my schedule was ruined by my parents. Every morning, he always knock on my door and say, have your breakfast. The breakfast is ready on the table. Your dad is waiting on the table. He want to speak out to you. And I have to wake up, you know, oh, mom, you know, I want to go back to sleep for a little bit. No, no, you have to wake up. Your dad is waiting. And I get to the table. And it's not yet over. My dad is kind of like scolding at me. He was teaching me, don't be lazy, don't wake up so late. And there's the term in Bahasa that I don't know how to translate it in English. And they have the term saying, you know, Rejeki itu bisa dipatok ayam. Rejeki itu bakal dipatok ayam. Don't wake up so late. Don't wake up too late. And afterwards, it's not yet done, guys. He always say like, okay, go to work. But wash your dishes first. <laughs> you know? And I get so frustrated to the point I said, oh, I want to have my own life back. And the very end, I said, you know, I ran out a place in my own. I ran out an apartment for two years. And when I get out from the home, I was so happy. 
I was so fulfilling, you know. I was like, oh my God, thank God. At last, I have my own schedule back. I have on my own routine back. I have my life back. And now I am free. You know, I feel free because no one annoys me at home. But after the second week, what happened, guys, of my state, second year, sorry, after my state, I get a bit alone. And I feel lonely. And at the very end, I said, I miss home. I miss the chattering of my mom, the scolding of my dad, you know, telling me to do this, do that, do this, do that. I miss all of that. I miss my home, which is my family. And when I talk about home, am I talking about church, guys? You know, is when people, all the ushers, talks about welcome home. Does it say welcome home to church? No. Because home without Jesus is just a building and a room. So the real home that I'm talking about is coming back to Jesus. Because Jesus is your home. Jesus is your real home. Amen, guys? Let's give a round of applause once more to Jesus. So wherever you are right now, guys, whatever you're feeling, maybe you have that guilt of coming back home. Maybe you feel ashamed. But trust me, God is waiting at his door of your heart for you to open up back to him. So come back at any time. Come back at any time. Let me continue. Let me finish with this verse. In verse 25 of 32. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came back near in the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied, and the father has killed the fattened calf because he had him back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobey your order. Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when his son of yours, who has scandered your property with prostitutes, come home, you kill the fattened calf for him. My son, the father said, you're always with me, and everything I have is yours. But we had celebrate and be glad because his brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and it was found. Amen? Amen. Guys, when I read about these parables, I thought these parables only talk about one lost son. Right? Because he's only said a parable of lost son. But when I read it over and over again, there's a revelation that God has given to me. He said, you know, that are lost is actually both of them. That are lost actually are both of them. Because... The big brother, imagine what is, what is the owning of his father is actually is his, right? All the, what is the father of his world is actually is his. So he was angry, he was, ang he was envy because of his younger brother who came back home, who spent all his wealth, but he came back home and the dad made him a party. And he cut one of a, uh, the best uh, sheep. For him. Imagine, he owned all the feel of the sheep. If you want to make a party every day, he can make it. If you want to cut all the sheep, he can do it every day. And why he was angry? He, uh, he was physically at home. He was physically at home. 
But does it mean his heart and his soul actually at home? Does it mean his heart and his soul is actually at home? Guys, you know, yes, when I came back, to Korea, and I sleep over my, my, my parents' house. And I was expecting, you know, my mom cook my favorite food in my childhood. It's actually uh, called uh, samur. Samur. <laughs> you know, who, who likes samur here? You know, raise your hand. I, I see some of you guys. Yes, it was so nice. You know, I love samur, daging samur. You know, I was expecting for a month because I've been for a month staying with my parents, staying over because I miss them, I miss my niece. And I'm expecting my mom cook for me. But at the very end, he never cooked for me. Until one day, I go home from work and got home. And there was my brother with his family who's visiting to my parents' house as well. And my mom cooked some more for him and his family. But when I see the bowl... It's only left over. And I get mad. And I get pissed. I said, I said to like, my heart was, I was pissed. Like, why every day I was here, present in this place, physically at home, but you never cooked my favorite food. But once my brother came home with his family, just visiting, you cooked my favorite food. And there's no leftover. I was angry. And until, you know, that mom and son instinct, my mom can feel that, you know, that I was mad. I was pissed until my mom said, like, what's wrong? What's wrong with you? And I said, no, nah, nothing, nothing, you know. It's okay, nothing, mom. Don't worry, it's okay. And until my mom said again, no, what's wrong? What's wrong? Really, what's wrong? I know you're mad at me. What's wrong? I said, you never cook me. My samur when I'm staying here for almost this one month. Why well, you cook for, for Coco, you know, to my brother, I said, and to his family. Why well, you cook for him? I was here. I was waiting for you to cook for me. You know what my mom responds to me, back at me? You know, this is the term with Indonesian slang as well. I, I, cannot, I, I cannot try to translate. I said, lebay alu? Lebay alu? You know, in English, maybe I will say like, you know, you're too much. You're too much. If you want the samur, tell me, communicate with me, and I will cook it for you. You want it tomorrow? I'll cook it for you. You want it next day? I'll cook it for you. What kind of meat that you want? I'll cook it for you every single day until you get bored out of it. And there were... I remember all this verse. You know, you cannot expect anything from others when you don't have communicate with him or hers. So the point that I want to bring out to you, with no good communication, with a good communication, there will be no relationship. Don't expect your home at the room Watching your Netflix, playing your gadget, never discuss, never communicate with your parent and expecting something from them. Your parent isn't God. He don't know what, what you feel. You have to have a good communication with him, with her. And the same way with us, guys. Doesn't mean when you come to church every Sunday, you never miss out the church. Maybe you're home as physically, you're in church physically. But let me ask you again, are your heart and soul are at home? Are your heart and soul is with Jesus? Are you with Jesus, guys? Because the only way, the only way that you can communicate with the Father, it's actually through Christ alone. Through Christ alone. Because our Father in heaven love us so much, too much. He has given His begotten Son, 
Jesus Christ to die at the cross for our sin. So through Him, we celebrate because our freedom was being paid full by His blood. And now we can communicate again with our Father in heaven through Christ. Through Christ alone. So guys, let me tell you about this boat, son. Even though right now, maybe the long lost son, yes, that was a sinful one. He's never in home. But he want to come back home. He was the lost one. But the big brother, he's always at home. But his heart never been at home. His heart never been at home. Maybe right now that you guys are feeling the same. I don't know wherever you are right now. God is calling you guys to come back home. To come home to Jesus. Guys, I want to close with this. I want all the worshiper to come up front. And I want you guys to all stand up. To all stand up. You know, there is a song that blesses me. But it's not a church song. But it's okay. When I read it about the lyrics, it blesses me somehow. And it talks about coming home. And if you know this song, I want you to sing along with me. It's okay. You, let me sing it with it vocally. It's all right. You know, it said like this. I'm coming home. I'm coming home. Tell the world I'm coming home. Let the rain wash away of the pain of yesterday. And now my kingdom's away. And forgiven my mistake. I'm coming home. I'm coming home. Tell the world I'm coming home. You know, I believe our kingdoms with our Father, Jesus Christ, wait for all of us. And He has forgiven of all our sins. So don't be shameful. Maybe you feel that you disgust of yourself. It seems that, oh, I'm not worthy, God. I'm not worthy. But actually, God has forgiven all your mistakes. And your kingdoms awaits. So come home. Come home. Come home. Let's give a worship. Let's give a worship. Let's sing. Let's sing.
thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus Christ, for the message that we had received. Father, knowing that we are worthy always in your eyes. Maybe we have some guilt in our past. Maybe we have a sinful past. But doesn't mean your love to us changes. You love us too much, Lord. Father, thank you for reminding us for this message. That you always waiting for us to come back to you, oh God. I pray about all your children here at 360 Youth Ministry. Lord Father, tell them no matter people said about them that they're not worthy. Maybe some people have the ability to see their values, but it doesn't mean they're worthless in your eyes. Father, reminding them how you love them so, so much. Right now, anoint them again with your first love to all of them, Lord. Bless them. Guide them with your spirit, oh Lord. Amen. Knowing the best is always yet to come. For every, each one of them. Yes. I have finished. I'm done with your word. But your spirit always live in us. To guide us. To bless us. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus Christ. Mighty name, I pray. Amen. 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 God bless you all. God bless you all. So still standing up, uh, we are going to conduct a Holy Communion. So I think uh, it's, uh, it's what we've been done. Uh, once a month, uh, we will have the Holy Communion. So we will now conduct the Holy Communion. So it is very important to note that we should not take Holy Communion lightly. And I want to remind one again that Holy Communion is only reserved for those who are at the age of 12, 12 years old and above. And only those that are true believers of Jesus Christ. If you are unsure whether you should take it or not, it is better not to take it this week. So if you remember along the way, when or while you are entering the room, you received the, the bread and cup. So please raise your hand if you want to participate in this Holy Communion, but you haven't received the bread and cup. So raise your hands uh, and we will have it over to you. Yeah, a couple of people are in front of This is what the Bible said on the first Corinthians chapter 11 verse 28 the Bible says let a person examine himself then and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup let's take this opportunity to examine ourselves make sure that we are not holding something against somebody if the person is not here uh, you can pray now and make a commitment to make peace with him or her after the service if you have been indulging some sins make your peace with God today this is the time to say no Lord as I take this Holy Communion, I ask for the forgiveness of sin and I ask for the power to say no to every wrongdoings in our life. We should remember that He is in this place listening to our prayers. There shouldn't be any envy, jealousy, anything that hinders you from connecting with God today. And I want to remind you once again that this Holy Communion consists of two elements, the bread and the wine. The bread and the wine are symbols. The bread symbolized the broken body of Jesus Christ and the wine is the symbol of the blood of Christ which was away our sins. His blood doesn't just cover up or forgive, it removes all record against us. O oh Lord, see us with your compassion. Forgive our sins and we plead in the blood of Jesus. We receive the strength to go forward and overcome so that your name will be glorified. Let's lift the bread in our right hand.
This is what the Bible said on the second Corinthians chapter 11 that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it gave it to it to his disciple and said take and eat this is my body which in for you do this in remembrance of me father we consecrate this bread in the name of father in the name of the son in the name of holy spirit as we receive this by faith let sickness be healed in the name of jesus let the weak be strengthened to the glory of your name let us eat the bread in the name of jesus Let's lift the wine in our right hand. In the same way, also Jesus took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Father, as we lift the cup, we consecrate it in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. That Lord, as your people receive the blood of Christ by faith, let them walk in every victory of Jesus Christ. May your covering rest upon their life in the name of Jesus. Let's drink the cup in the name Jesus. of Jesus. Let's give thanks to God and raise your voice to thank Him. We give you thanks, God. community in our daily life yes. let our family be blessed let our health be blessed Amen. let our study be blessed Amen. in the name of Jesus we pray Jesus. everybody who believes shout Amen, Amen. 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 so how are we church are we good Good. Come on, are we good? Yeah. Who's excited for holiday? Yeah. Come on, I've seen some of your friends have, have just gone away. Some of you have been traveled around, and, and it's good to see you back in the house of the Lord. And I'm just so happy. I've seen so, so many, well, I cannot say new face, but you've been with us, but for some reasons, then you just rejoin back with us, and, and it's an excited moment for everyone in this room. Are we good? Are we excited? Yeah. Come on, make that round of applause for God. <laughs> Are you blessed with the word of God? Yeah? yeah, I mean like I'm so blessed and it, it, you probably think it was so simple but I'm telling you, it has a deep meaning, you know, when you're talking about the parable of the lost son and you know, all of us, we are son and we've been lost many times but it's always good to welcome back to your home, to coming back to your home, amen? Amen. So who's watch World Cup? None of you? So Morocco, Morocco? <laughs> 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 semi final yeah, alright so it's good World Cup so I think uh, we're gonna do all ring so uh, again 
uh, due to pandemic, we are unable to distribute the the offering pocket, the offering bag. So we'll do it uh, by scanning the QR code. So uh, if by any chance, if you bring your physical money, you can raise your hands and we'll give it over the envelope. And while you are leaving the room, you can put it the envelope inside the offering box. Aaron, good to see you, man. <laughs> All right, so it's a welcome home. I mean, like by now you should know when we say welcome home, what does that mean? So I want to ask any one of you that this is the first time for you uh, coming to 316, coming to this community. You can raise your hands, and we would like to know you more. We would like to get in touch with you and any one of you first time coming to 316 will welcome you to your home all right it's okay i think we still have uh, another announcement is uh i'm telling you so yesterday uh, we as a team uh the pastoral team and with the core uh, leaders as well we have a, a kind of like almost five hours meeting so we started meeting at around 1 1 30 and i I get back home almost at six, and I'm telling you the truth. When I get back at my place, I ask Panadol to my wife because it's just too much. <laughs> I'm telling you, uh, we've, we've been discussing a lot, and 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 uh, next year uh, we'll we'll do our best to keep improving everything. So, uh, but we need your support. So there will be changes in the way we do our community. There will be changes in the way we do ministry. There will be changes in. In the way when when you you you've, well if 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 we done it correctly and, and according to God's will, when you come next year, you you're going to experience different thing. But again, we need your support. Who's excited for next year? Yeah. Yay. So, but again, we need your support. We need you to to keep supporting us. And by by saying that, we need more people. We need more volunteers. So, if you want to be part of the praise and worship team, we welcome you. If you want to be the part of creative team, we welcome you. I know. This has been presented, you know, weeks after weeks. But, but uh, if you really have the heart to serve, I'm telling you, do it while you are young, you know, because ya orang bilang kesempatan gak datang dua kali. So while we have the opportunity to serve, why we don't do it? And a community, our cool, yeah, uh, we're going to. Do some changes in the call, but uh, while you're waiting for the announcement to come, we'll keep the call running. And I think call is the last call is, is on the 18th of December, and we'll be have our call back on the somewhere in the mid of January. So while we have uh, having the Christmas break, do it, enjoy, spend your time with your beloved ones. And next week we still have the same service, 9, 11, 30, and also for the 25th of December. We don't have holiday, so church is still open, right? So, so Christmas service we have on the 25th of December. And also, on the 1st of January, we still have our service back normal. 9 and 11.30 a.m. service, all right? Who's excited today? Come on! I invite you to stand on your feet as we are going to close our service today. So, are we excited? Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure final exam is over, right? I think so. So some of you probably just need to go to school just to do remedial or just to get your academic report. But I'm I'm very sure all the exam has been done. Am I right? Yeah. Come on! I want to see all the excitement, holiday, <laughs> and it's good. I've seen a lot of people also coming back from their uh, overseas studies, and and I'm so happy. I'm I'll be seeing uh, some of your 316 members. Elian, it's good to see you. God is just so good. All right, so let's close our service today. Let's unite in prayer. Father God, we give you thanks for today. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for the word of God. Thank you for sending a Pastor Brian in the middle of us to church. Let's just raise our hands and, and, and pray for Pastor Brian. Thank you, God, for Pastor Brian. God, you know his heart and, and what he's been doing to the kingdom of God. As a church, as a community, we speak blessing over his life and his future planning, his community, his ministry, that everything that he does, it is actually glorifying your name. And God, your blessing will, will, be, will rest upon his family, his ministry, and in whatever the thing that he does now and in the future. 
And God, we also would like to pray for our family, for our parents. Uh, this is the moment where we are going to enjoy our, most of our time with, with our parents, with our beloved one. God, you keep us, that you keep our family safe. And we can actually enjoy this Christmas moment and spending our time with the beloved once we also speak blessing for our church leader, for Panico, for Dr. Yanto, and any other leader who above us. Thank you, God, for, for them. Thank you for our leaders, for giving us the platform as a next generation, as a younger uh, people to have the platform to know Jesus and, and be able to have a service all together with these beautiful facilities. We speak blessing over their life, and we rebuke everything that does not come from you. And church, just raise up your hands to receive the blessing from the Abba Father. The Lord, He will bless your family, your ministry, your community, university, school, studies, work, job, business, occupation. Let it every single thing you do. Always remember that God be with you and He will never leave you alone. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Everybody who believes, shout, Amen. Amen.